Hello, thank you for joining us today and welcome to the Genesis R&D Supplements version 1.5 update overview. My name is Ben Miller, joined as always by Alicia and Stephanie, but also joined by Peter today, who is our supplements expert. He is going to be doing the overview of the application. Do a little bit of history on ESHA and Genesis. ESHA was established in 1981 has a large suite of nutrition software products now and services. The Genesis R&D food application that's been around for um, well over 20 years uh, and then supplements, which is what we're gonna look at today, food processor and consulting services. Oops. Again, looking at the Genesis supplements application today, um, supplements was released in 2016 and is designed to help users manage processes and industry challenges meet federal requirements. Um, we do have one upcoming webinar for Genesis Supplements. It's gonna be just a Supplements 101 training, so ingredients, formulas, statements, and labels. It's kind of an overview of the application tools needed for data management and label creation. So it's gonna be on April 30th for all of you that wanna join. Go to our website, sign up for that one, or watch any of the past webinars that we have as well, tutorials, things like that too. Please note, as always, this webinar is being recorded. All of our past webinars are available on our website, and you can sign up for, again, that one that's coming up that later this month, uh, or next month, um, on the website as well. If you have any questions, submit those questions as we go. We have people standing by to answer those questions. So um, ask along the way. Once we get to the Q&A part, then um, you know, we'll probably have a, a good flood of questions that come in. So get those questions in early so we can answer them as soon as we can. Um, and if we don't get to your question, or if we answer with, it's a complicated answer that we'll research into, certainly reach back out to us um, and we can, we can answer those after the webinar as well. We do also have a couple of handouts in the webinar that you can get to inside of your GoToWebinar control panel. Those are gonna be two spreadsheets that Peter's going to go into and talk about with the import wizard with the uh, new update. So if you want to try out those spreadsheets and import those items into your own um, supplements application, you can try that out as well, uh, either while he's doing the, the webinar or you know, right after if you wanna test out the process as well. With that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Peter, and he's going to take you through the application. Thank you, Ben. Uh, hopefully, you can see my screen. Looking good, Peter. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Ben, and, and uh, thanks, everyone, for getting uh, on this webinar today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through two key feature updates uh, on our Genesis R&D Supplements version 1.5. Um, one is a, a minor update, and one is a very large or major update. Uh, just to reiterate what Ben had mentioned, um, all of this information can be found on the ESHA eLearning Center. Uh, on our ESHA website, and then uh, as well, uh, anyone on the, the website, if they want to contact me directly, if they have uh, more detailed uh, questions they'd like to uh, get answered, you can always uh, email me at peter at esha.com, peter at esha.com. So let's jump right into it. What uh, This is the uh, open screen for Genesis R&D Supplements. And let's get into the very first update. The first update is the ability to add chemical and microbial contaminants to the software. Um, currently, the software tracks the Prop 65 chemical impurities. And here we have the thresholds. But what's nice about the software now is we're able to add our own uh, chemical impurities, uh, heavy metals, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very easy what you do. You'll see these various groups here on the left, and chemical impurities is up at the top. Uh, what you do is you uh, bring your mouse up to the heavy metals and right click and then hit add. And then what you want to do is then you can hit uh, or type in. Uh, whatever you'd like. So uh, this is a very common 
uh, thing that's being tracked right now and oftentimes found on um, the nutritional data sheets or product spec sheets for ingredients. And then you can just right click here and you can put in a threshold of some type. So we're gonna go back to uh, the main uh, uh, header area where we can add a new ingredient and I'll show you that this is in the software. So this is the very first way that you can add uh, an impurity. You can go into this options section and you can add it right here. There, and you'll see here that you've got microbial counts. I'm gonna add that uh, a different way. So there's actually two different ways to add either chemical or microbial contaminants. So I'm gonna close out of here. Then I'm gonna hit new up here in the upper left and I'm gonna create an ingredient. And it's very easy to create an ingredient in Genesis R&D supplements. You go to the box here and you click on the ingredient. And then you just type in um, your name of your ingredient. Let's call it ingredient X. Okay, and let's bring in our total heavy metals uh, that we added already to the database. So all you need to do is you just need to title, uh, type in, and it's all term-based, so as it starts to make a match, it'll find whatever's uh, in the database, and then it hits total heavy metals, and let's just say it's five, and then it automatically puts it in its units of parts per million. So basically what you're doing here is you create a new ingredient, uh, is you're creating a fingerprint and um, a portfolio or a, a, an idea of, a, a, of the ingredient itself, and then we get it into the software. So, and that's the other key thing to, to remember, uh, especially for the, the second edition where you're importing data, into the application. You always wanna get your ingredients in first, and then you do your formulas. So let's do, uh, let's do a microbial contaminant, and that's another thing that you can add. So you can add chemical and microbial uh, contaminants to the software. Let's do, um, let's do total uh, plate count. A very common one as well. So, um, you can see it's kind of not highlighted here, but it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit faded. So all you need to do is click on it, and then it pops up. So now it is in, uh, it's gonna be in the software, in the database. So let's just say uh, it's 10,000. And then what you do down here with the dropdown is then you can choose your units and we have colony forming units per gram. So obviously this is an indicative um, unit uh, a parameter of the cleanliness uh, of the facility. Um, so uh, total overall bacterial type of uh, profile. So this is really nice, because now you have uh, the ability to add these chemical and uh, microbial contaminants. So if we were to close out here, go into open, this is our open screen, and these are the ingredients that I have, then it is now in the database and uh, these parameters are here. So anytime I have a formula that I'm using ingredient X, these this will be carried with it, okay? So that's really the first feature update. Again, you find it in the options section uh, of the software. And then you can also create an impurity or a contaminant as you're creating a new ingredient. Now the big update, which I'm really, really excited about is our import wizard. And basically what that is, that is a tool that allows uh, users, Genesis R&D Supplements users, to import both ingredient and formula data uh, directly into the database without having to manually enter it. Um, and as probably many of the listeners uh, on the webinar have, they have probably thousands of ingredients and formulas. So this, is, this has been a, an ongoing key initiative project for ESHA Research for the last year. And we completed it about a month ago and launched it. So we're really, really excited uh, with this particular uh, uh, feature update. So what you do, uh, and before we do this, let me show you, what I'd like to do is show you um, the spreadsheets before we actually import them. So there's two spreadsheets, and really what you wanna do is you want to 
uh, import all of your ingredients into the database before you do anything with the formulas because uh, basically you won't have any data. So what I did is I put together a spreadsheet that I've used in the past when I uh, was uh, directly involved in uh, the product development and commercialization of dietary supplements, something very similar uh, to what we did uh, in, in the companies that I have worked for. So um, basically you have an ingredient column and I have three ingredients, very different ingredients, by the way, I have an herbal material. Um, I have uh, a type of, uh, obviously a sugar uh, slash uh, uh, kind of a, a, a builder or a bulker in the formula and then um, uh, a flow agent an anti-caking agent. So very, very different, add these things at very, very different quantities, but I wanted to kind of show that diversity. Um, you have the entry date, so today's the fifth. You have the supplier names, you have the codes of those uh, respective ingredients, and the codes in the Genesis R&D supplements can be as long as you want, and they can also be alphanumeric and, and be composed of dashes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have the price. Uh, for each of the ingredients, price per kilogram, that's the most common unit used here in the States. And then I have these three columns here, and this is uh, pertinent to the rose hips extract, uh, herbal material. I have the uh, botanical name, uh, the Latin name, the scientific name, however you'd like to call it. I have it here, botanic uh, name, botanical name. The source is the fruit. What's nice about Genesis R&D supplements is that uh, it is based on the CFRs. So um, all of the various sources, the seven or eight sources for herbal materials are in the software already. Um, uh, so that's very nice. And so this particular extract uh, count comes from the fruit. I have a concentration in some type of uh, diluent, uh, one to four percent organic. It's 95% organic. And then I provided the shelf life um, and then the notes. And this is where you can really put your practical nitty gritty uh, testing material, uh, things to do before a particular unit operation in the scale up. So if you're going to the pilot plant with this formula, it's, it's basically past the benchtop muster. Um, you wanna check these things before you go and agglomerate or spray dry or micro encapsulate these ingredients. Uh, these are very common tests to do. So this is free form. You can, you can further customize it uh, in the software. Now these gray columns, this, or this gray row rather, are really the fields in the software already in the application and you'll see that. Um, uh, the yellow uh, columns are the uh, dietary components of the ingredients. And so most of this material, in fact, all of it, was uh, the yellow material here, the yellow data, was, was coming from uh, a nutritional data sheet per 100 grams of each of the materials. So for instance, there are 25 uh, milligrams of uh, polyphenols in the rose hips extract, et cetera, et cetera. So this yellow material came off the um, uh, uh, nutritional data sheets. The green column, are the uh, allergens, and we track uh, all of the US allergens in the software. Um, but what you would like, you know, what, what's I think probably the best way to do this, and I've worked various formats of the, of the uh, spreadsheet, which you'll definitely have a copy of this uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, you wanna put in your particular uh, uh, allergen, and an X means you've designated that uh, that allergen to that particular uh, ingredient, so fructose. And then you have the allergen statement, it's a separate column. And again, this is just more of a reminder for me, made in a facility that processes almonds, and this can be further customized in the software. So you have your, what, what allergen is there, and what's the basic statement. Uh, the blue columns here are groups. And uh, these are new groups that are not found in the software uh, already. So when you purchase Genesis R&D supplements, there's groups that um, are already there. 
you can create as many groups as you want. They're used primarily for categorization and easy searching. Um, but since we have um, a botanical here, which is the rose hips, and we also have a flow agent, I thought it would be good to create these particular groups, and I put an X for that ingredient. And then the red columns are the Prop 65 heavy metals. And what I did is I just designated one here, uh, one part per million for the fructose, okay? So this is your basic uh, ingredient import spreadsheet, okay? close out here and then I'm going to look at the formula one and the formula spreadsheet is actually quite similar um, there are a couple requirements for both uh, both types of spreadsheets um, first you need to have a header row so you need to have a header row in both the ingredient and formula spreadsheets. The header row does not need to be at the top. It could be down here if you wanted it. So it doesn't need to be at the top. You don't need color coding. Um, and then the second real requirement is you need to have data uh, in the data fields down here if you want it to be mapped over. So uh, if there was nothing in this field, if it was just blank, and we mapped over this spreadsheet, it would go blank into the application. If there was a zero there, it would be mapped over as a zero into the, into the application. But you definitely need data. And um, this is the, you know, the, the header rows are the terms that are actually being mapped over. I mean, and that's really why you need to have a header row. So if we go back, uh, let's let's finish this spreadsheet, if, and then I, I can go back to the ingredient really quick. But basically, you have a formula name. It's an immune type formula. Entry date, a code, alphanumeric. Uh, again, formula notes. Test the loose bulk density prior to tableting. There are in this particular run 10,000 uh, bottles or containers being run. There are 50 uh, servings per bottle. The serving size is, the quantity is one, and the unit is a tablet. Um, the percent organic is 95%. And then the basic ingredient statement, again, this is free form, so you can uh, further customize this in the, in the application, and you can also do it here as well. But I, I typically put something just basic to get some type of content in there, and then I do a further customization using the application. Um, as you can see, you have this data right here in the gray area is all the same. It's basically identical. And so what you want to do with the formula screen is for each uh, ingredient, so let's look at the yellow area right here, what I did is I put the ingredient, the three ingredients we have, the supplier of that ingredient, the code, and then the amount per serving. So I've got 1350 rose hips, 560, and 0.2 milligrams uh, in each serving. And then this column I've designated either an active uh, column or an inactive. The silicon dioxide is an inactive. I don't want it to be seen in the uh, supplement facts panel itself. I want it to be in the other ingredients uh, area. So, but what you notice is you've got, um, you've got these particular rows for each, you wanna have one row, identical row for each ingredient. And at this point in the software, that's how it was programmed. Doesn't mean it's gonna be like that always, but we wanted to get um, something solid out there uh, and easy to use right up at the front, um, but as software develops, this could change as well. So, but this is the basic setup for the formula uh, spreadsheet. So you've got basically two spreadsheets there. Now let's get back into um, the, uh, the Genesis R&D supplements application. So what you do is you go to the database section here and you'll see an import data and these are all the file formats that can be imported. I did Excel because 99% of the uh, companies are using Excel and will be importing Excel uh, spreadsheets. 
So what you do is you just hit import, okay? And then you choose your spreadsheet. And we're gonna always choose our ingredient spreadsheet first, okay? And that was the one that, that we looked at. So the first screen you, you have here, I'm not gonna read everything here, but I'm gonna give you the key gist is, you basically wanna map your data to the ESHA fields. And it just gives you a very easy choice. Is, is it an ingredient spreadsheet? Is it a formula spreadsheet? It's an ingredient spreadsheet. The second uh, uh, screen here is the header row. And what I like about this is that the header row is automatically defaulted. Again, you don't need it here. You could have it down here, uh, and then you'd have to default the color but there. But this is the header row. So you want to select it. And then this third uh, screen is select the data row. So this is all of the data in my uh, spreadsheet underneath the header row. Okay, now this is the really uh, neat uh, uh, screen, and this is where, where you're really doing the mapping, okay? And so let's start up from the top. It says assign a defining amount. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna hit 100. And what that defining amount is, is that that is the amount, if you look at a nutritional data sheet for one ingredient, 99.999% of the time it's 100 grams. Very rarely will it be less than 100. You do not need to use 100, you can use something else, but um, it, in the large majority it will always be 100 grams. So I put 100 grams here. Now it says 18 out of the 29 fields are mapped. So if we were to go down here, these are the 29 fields going down here, if we were to count these, these are the 29. If uh, you were to just do the minimal mapping of this spreadsheet, all I would have to do is map over the name of the ingredient, and I could actually map everything over, um, uh, or map what I had mapped the name, and it would have gone over. Uh, to, for today's purposes, I wanna map everything over to show you kind of the process. So let's immediately just map over. So this, this column right here means that it's not mapped, okay? Uh, if it's a red, uh, X, if it's a green check, uh, it is mapped. So this second column, original field, this is the actual name in my spreadsheet. So here it says source and it mapped over exactly to source, the, sor the, the, the same word. So what we're gonna do is go to this third column and we're gonna start mapping over. So what you do, you go to the red X's and you hit ignore. And what you'll find is you'll see these radio buttons and these five groups basically. And there's a nutrients group, an allergens group, a groups, a user added fields and ingredient attributes. Uh, group and obviously we're working with the ingredient right now. So what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit show all, and it's the ingredients uh, radio button is uh, is on. So these are the things that I can now choose that will relate to the you know to the ingredient. So I, what I want to do is I want to find name. So there's name, and then it maps over. It turns uh, to a green check. Okay. Let's, let's continue. So let's go to the entry date, and I'm gonna hit show all, and I think gotta create date. Supplier, so let's hit ignore, and these are the suggestions. Uh, supplier name, code, let's hit user code, price per kilogram, uh, let's go to show all, let's go to co cost amount, and then let's put in our amount right here. So it was kilogram. That's that, our ingredients were all based on kilogram in our spreadsheet. Botanical name, Latin scientific name. Let's see if we have that, Latin name. Um, percent organic, percent organic. Shelf life, because we had it in years, years. These guys are already uh, mapped over, which is great. And then let's keep going down. Vitamin C, so what is vitamin? Vitamin C is a, is a nutrient, right? Ingredient nutrient. So let's hit ignore, and then let's hit our nutrients radio button. 
and then we can find it that we can find vitamin C that way or we could have gone to show all and it would have done the same thing so it basically mapped over here and then these groups were our new groups the blue columns botanical and flow agents so let's hit ignore and let's hit groups radio button and then let's hit show all and we'll hit new group so that's a new group in our application now and then let's do the same let's hit ignore groups show all new so that created and it mapped over so basically if we go back up now um, 29 out of 29 fields are mapped they're basically all green checked um, and we have two new groups and supplements botanical and flow agent um, this column right here are is pertinent really primarily to uh, the uh, dietary components um, if you want something to be active or inactive or even the ingredients uh, meaning do you want it in the label or on the ingredient statement or other ingredients these are the mapped units uh, right here um, and then right here uh, is the sample data so this is really nice because what you can do is if you click this um, arrow you'll see the three ingredients come up you've got silicon dioxide fructose and rose hips and so you actually see what was in your spreadsheet so it's really a, a nice uh, way to do that so let's hit next and then this fourth screen says validation all data is valid you may begin importing click next to begin the import so it's basically validated the data and then you hit next so what do we have here basically the import is complete three ingredients have been imported and then two groups were created basically so let's go back to the actual database now so I hit search and then I go into my ingredient section right here and as you can see we've got our three ingredients we've got our silicon dioxide our rose hips and our fructose so if we go to rose hips extract all of the information we mapped over so we started from the spreadsheet we mapped it over into the uh, database and now it is here so you can see all of this information that was that was added um, if you you know like for instance notes etc cetera, etc cetera, you know it's it's gonna all uh, it's, it's it's all gonna be in there so let me go to fructose and show you the allergen uh, section um, remember we tied an allergen to fructose and so if we go to the allergen section right here, you'll see that it's it's been tied to it. So I could copy this over to the custom section, and now it's going to be, uh, anytime this ingredient uh, has been, you know, is being used, that allergen will be uh, tied uh, to that, to fructose. So, so now let's go back to the database section right here and let's hit import data and this time let's do the formula okay so we did this spreadsheet let's go to formula here and it's exactly the same process as uh, as the ingredient which is really really nice you start always importing these uh, and then you import these next so I'm going to hit formula same as an ingredient select the header row so this is already defaulted in my spreadsheet and i hit next uh, third screen it's the data the data is highlighted here so we hit next and we have a much uh, smaller uh, amount of uh, items to be mapped okay as you can see with the ingredients it was down here so we have 16 fields uh, here so these two up here there's no item identifier mapped and item amount or item amount quantity and item unit needs to be mapped these two absolutely need to be mapped in order to map over the spreadsheet absolutely 
Uh, but for purposes of the webinar, let's do everything so you can kind of see, again, the process. So the item identifier is the ingredient itself. So um, if we see ingredient right here and we hit ignore and we go here, let's put the item name. Okay. And now it mapped. And you see one of the, it disappeared up here. And then let's map over the item amount, which the item again would be the ingredient. So let's find out the amount, which is right here, item amount. And then we used milligrams for our uh, serving. So you can see now both of these have disappeared and 10 out of the 16, we've got 10 uh, green checks. So let's, let's start up at the top, the formula name, this mapped over really nicely. Uh, the entry date uh, is the creation date, the formula code, let's use uh, user code here, and formula notes, uh, notes, and again, that's uh, very custom. You can go in the software and, and write as many notes as you want there, the type of notes. These have all mapped over really nicely. Um, percent organic target here. Uh, supplier of the ingredients and code. So let's use your code. So now everything is mapped over. 100% uh, of it is mapped over. So we hit uh, next. And then here's our validation screen. All data is valid. You may begin importing. And now we have one formula that was imported, our immune formula. So if we search here and we go to our formulas section, we have our formula in the database. So let's just check out the formula real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna open these up a little bit. And what you can see is the formula has been mapped over. So everything was mapped over. We have our active ingredients. We have our inactive uh, ingredient. We have the components of this active ingredient and the components of the fructose. This is this number right here is the actual number on your label. And this is what's really nice about Genesis R&D supplements is that you can do the traditional formulation work and you can also see your label being generated. So actually the label was, was really generated before I pulled that uh, out. Uh, if I pull this out, now you can actually see it. So you can see these numbers right here are actually the numbers right here, okay? Um, you also have the ability to add overage, uh, moisture loss, the amount per serving. The amount per serving is actually the physical product that the consumer would eat. So if it was a tablet, uh, theoretically, the tablet would have exactly 1350 milligrams of rosehips extract. This is your true percent formula. You have your costing for serving here, uh, your batch cost, uh, your ingredient cost that we had put into our spreadsheet, your batch weight, your user codes, your percent organic, and your lead. And as you can see down here, the percent organic is in target. I put my uh, cursor over this and it says, the organic percentage of this formula is more than target. And the target basically is 95%. So if it's the same or more, it's going to be. And then this red area right here says the amount of lead uh, here is, uh, the amount of lead, 0 0.3 ppm, is greater than the threshold uh, based on the regulations for lead. So there's many things you could do here, obviously. You know, you could go back to the supplier, you could reduce the, the, um, the you know, the, the, the fructose, uh, because we had the lead in the fructose, et cetera, et cetera, you get another sample. So there's many different ways um, of doing that. So basically, 
you everything has been mapped over here. You have your initial label to, to view. You can't change the label here on this screen, but we will go over here. So you've got in this ribbon, you've got the notes. So this again was test the loose bulk density uh, prior to tableting. Um, you've got uh, things that have been mapped over here. You've got the, ser uh, the serving size, the servings per container. Um, there's a couple things at uh, right now uh, that we don't map over, and which eventually it will happen. It's just um, at this time we haven't been able to uh, to get that completed. So for the ingredients, um, we there is not the ability to map over conversions and the alternate names. And in this particular screen, um, we currently don't map over conversions and, and alternate names as well. So this is conversion. So if we were to do some type of conversion here. Um, uh, it doesn't map over. So if we had a conversion in Excel, it wouldn't show up here. So we can manually do it. You know, we could say, uh, you know, one uh, mil, let's say milliliter, it is an extract. So uh, let's, let's just say it's 0 0.6 grams. So for, for that, uh, for the rose hips. So, you know, you, you've got it here, but currently it doesn't map over, but we will eventually get to that point where we'll, everything will map over from the spreadsheet. Let's go to the statements uh, tab right here. And this statements tab on the formula, when you're working with a formula, contains both the allergens um, as well as the other ingredients. And so remember we had tied our almond to the fructose, and I just put my mouse over there and it says this allergen is from fructose. I can hit that plus, uh, and I can send this over to custom. You know, I could write made in a facility with almond, et cetera, et cetera. But once I do this and save it, then it will be tied to the formula, the the allergen. Um, in the other ingredients section, the red are the active uh, ingredients, and the blue are the inactive. However, there are a lot of larger companies, in particular retailers, that are putting uh, the key functional ingredient or claim ingredient in both places. So they're, for instance, they're putting rose hips, like we have the rose hips here, and then uh, we have rose hips here. So we have it in both places. It's not necessary. You need to have it in this in one place or the other in the facts panel or in the ingredient statement, but more and more companies I, in, that I've been in discussion with are putting maybe one, maybe two in both places. Again, not law, but it's just what I've been seeing uh, the last year. Um, and then we go to this label area and I'll finish off uh, specifically uh, with the, um, the wizard. So basically what you can do here, this, is, this tab is where you can actually change the label you know, manually change it. And we, I will be going through a, a webinar here in, in April and going into the depth of really how to, to work this. But remember our rose hips extract? So what you can do is you can just click it right in the ingredient that you want in the, in the facts panel, and this great box will pop up. And this is then where you can further customize it. So remember we had the Latin scientific name, the source, the concentration, you could put Rosa Canina uh, there. You could put the fruit uh, or the source rather, and you could put the concentration. What I'm finding is uh, a lot of people are putting the Latin name and the source, not as much the uh, extract concentration. But these little arrows right here, you can move these arrows up and down as well. So you can move the, uh, the order uh, of these particular um, parameters. So, so in a nutshell, that's really uh, the two key features. We, we had a, a kind of a modest one in the fact that you could add chemical and uh, microbial contaminants uh, now to the software via the options section in Genesis R&D Supplements and a very major update, which is the Genesis uh, Import Wizard. And that uh, you'll be able to take uh, anything really in Excel, uh, whether they be ingredients and formulas, and with six or seven uh, keystrokes, you're able to input the data uh, quite easily.
Perfect. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, I have one thing that I wanted to point out as we go over into taking a look at uh, some questions and, and looking at our training. Uh, the spreadsheet that Peter had shown today, um, it's not just those fields that you that you have to have on your spreadsheet. Any sort of fields that you want to add in to the to your columns of your spreadsheet, if you have four nutrients or 70 nutrients that you need to import in using your import wizard, um, you just continue to add more columns in um, into that spreadsheet. So that's something we wanted to, to point out was it's not you know that's not just the one template that you have. It's it's really just kind of an example there. Um, exactly. Taking a look at our training schedule moving forward, we have two trainings on the schedule for the Genesis Supplements application. We have March 6th and 7th, um, and then we also have November 13th and 14th, both at our um, training facility in Oak Brook, Illinois. We're going to ask, we're, it looks like we just had, had one question we had a couple of times, so I'm going to address that. Um, but before I do, if you have any questions about you know, your account, licenses, anything like that, you can always contact our sales team. Uh, or of course, if you have any questions about using the program, support, anything like that, you can contact our support team. And we have tons of helpful links on our LinkedIn page, in our blog, e-newsletter, e-learning center, a lot of information available on our website as well. The one question that we had that I'm gonna go ahead and, and address, Peter, so you're off the hook for that one. Uh, we had it asked a couple of times. Um, in the case of two, ingredients that with the exact same name um, you know how do you differentiate that or is it possible to do that inside of the program with the import wizard or just inside of the interface uh, of the application and it certainly is possible you just have to make sure that either the supplier or the code are different for those items so if you have two ingredients if you have an ingredient that's fructose inside of the program already and then you're importing another one using the import wizard if it has a different supplier than the original one or a different code than the original one, it'll import perfectly fine. Obviously, it's it's up to you at that point if you want to have those two items have the exact same name. You know, maybe one has an allergen, one doesn't, and you want to differentiate that in the name. You know, I'm not going to give too much um, advice on that matter. You know, it's, it's kind of on uh, on your shoulders to determine how you'd like to name things at that point. Uh, but it's certainly from a functional standpoint in the program is possible to have two ingredients with the exact same name. Again, just that supplier or user code or both um, have to be different. Um, and then we had one more question. Um, and again, I'll take that one too. Um, are we able to import ingredients from the Genesis food application into Genesis supplements? And yes, that is possible. Uh, for that, we would be doing um, the EXL format of, of export. So inside of Genesis food, there's a export all option or inside of the item, there's an export option to create a basically a Genesis specific file. And then when you go into supplements, there is that import button and you select instead of selecting a spreadsheet or a text file, you just select that EXL file and those import a little bit easier because obviously the fields are already lined up. So you just select that file and it pulls it right in. We don't go through that wizard where you're selecting fields, it just pulls it right in because it knows what fields are what. If you have any additional questions, certainly let us know. If we didn't get to your question during the webinar, uh, feel free to reach out to us again. Again, you know, the, the support line, Peter, um, we're always here to help. So with that, you have a great day and we'll hopefully see you again soon.